here at Grace Lutheran, whether you've joined us here at the, at the church or have joined us uh, live on Facebook. We're so glad that you have done so here today. A couple of uh, brief announcements and reminders. Uh, first, be sure to keep an eye out uh, in your emails for the upcoming newsletter. Uh, more information will be coming out, uh, I believe, for the February newsletter, either tomorrow or Tuesday, uh, or at least at some point this week. Uh, so please uh, do, uh, be sure to pay attention to all of that. Uh, as well as a uh, thank you to all those who were able to join us for our annual meeting last week. Uh, whether it was uh, you were here at church in person or gathered with us uh, on Zoom, or I think we got somewhere in the neighborhood of about 40, 41 people who joined us uh, in both uh, combined uh, settings. So we're able to elect uh, our new council members and new officers, uh, so be sure to pay attention in the upcoming newsletter uh, for uh, who is now on our council. And finally, uh, if you take a look uh, in the bulletin, uh, you can start bringing some of those coins that you have uh, built up. 
Uh, if you take a look, uh, Welka is uh, restarting some of the noisy offering stuff, and uh, all more information about that is on the very last page in your bulletin. And if you have any questions about it, uh, you can touch base with Candace Bishop. Uh, with that, uh, let us uh, prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Please rise as you are able. We begin our service today in the same way that we live, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, in the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let us join together in our gathering hymn, hymn number 644.
and also in you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and love, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of our lesson. Our first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say that I'm only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and over kingdoms, to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read our psalm from responsibly. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me and set me free. Incline your ear to me and save me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. You are my prey and my stronghold. Deliver me, my God. From the hands of the wicked, of the evildoer and the oppressor. For you are my hope, O Lord God, my confidence since I was young. I have been sustained by you ever since I was born. From my mother's womb, you have been my strength. My praise shall be always of you. Second reading is from First Corinthians. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faiths so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we not, for we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, thought like a child, and reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror in me. But then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three. And the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please write us to the gospel information. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All who spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They 
Dear siblings in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So what do you do when someone tells you something that, while it is true, accurate, and correct, but you don't want to hear it? What do you do? How do you respond to situations like that? Do you become defensive? Do you thank the person for pointing out this rather inconvenient yet perhaps correct statement? Do you want to talk with them a little bit more about this statement that they've made? Do you want to learn a little bit more? Do you just simply thank the person and move on, hoping to avoid conflict? As you know, there are a wide range of responses when we hear something that is correct, yet we just don't want to hear it. We see and hear this all the time, especially during the pandemic, but even before it. Of course, we, during, this, during the pandemic, we are reminded that wearing masks, social distancing, and getting vaccinated are among the most effective ways to combat COVID and to keep ourselves and others safe. For some, this reminder is helpful. For others, they're just tired of hearing about it. At the same time, we are also reminded of some other truths in our world. The sky is blue, the snow is white, at least when it comes down, though in my backyard, maybe not so much. We have a couple of dogs. That when you live in northern Minnesota, it gets cold. Duh. Cross country skiing is fun, no matter how many times you fall down. And the other truth is that I will inevitably come close to, if not perfectly, fall down on the ice, especially at intersections while attempting to walk my dogs on the streets of Ely. All of these are true, yet I personally get rather annoyed when I slip or fall on the ice because now my side hurts, now my, now my behind hurts. Just because I do not like that the sidewalks are slippery and then I might fall doesn't make it any less true that I've actually probably fallen a few times already this winter and let's not rule out the fact that I might do, do, do so some more. In our gospel reading, this is the realization of those who have gathered at the synagogue on the Sabbath and have heard Jesus read scripture and deliver a message. They are told news and information about what Jesus has come to do, that while this information is true and correct, they do not like what they hear coming from Jesus. So what is this news? 
Well, if you remember from last week, we heard exactly what Jesus has come to do. We read last week that Jesus has come to his hometown of Nazareth and has gone to the synagogue on the Sabbath. He gets up to read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and says these words, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me pro to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. So this is the message that we have in the background of our reading today. As we talked about, this is his mission statement. This is why he came. And we will see throughout the remainder of Luke's gospel, Jesus do these very things over and over and over again. Some will like the things that he's doing. More often than not, especially those in positions of authority and those whose authority is being questioned and yes, threatened, they do not like what they see and hear. Now, the initial response, as we see in our scripture, by those who have gathered in the synagogue is that of amazement at the words that Jesus has spoken. This is, this amazement here is for a couple of reasons. First, notice how they speak about Jesus. Not as a prophet or a messiah, but as the son of Joseph. The community gathered there knows Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. In the same way that a few years ago, I went with some family to my grandpa's first call as a pastor. It took 30 seconds for the women at the front door to say, you're Evan Deek's family, aren't you? Well, now we have to behave. They know who we are. They may, the people in the synagogue may have watched Jesus grow up. At the very least, we know this community knows Jesus well. The second reason the community was likely amazed was how the, they interpreted the scripture passage that Jesus has read. It is likely that those hearing this message from Jesus understood it to mean that God was literally on their side, on the side of Israel. And they saw themselves as the one about whom Jesus was speaking. They were the poor. They were the captives. They were the hungry and the oppressed. So when they heard Jesus' message, they probably got quite excited because they thought that their enemies were about to be brought down. They were in for a bit of surprise. But the God of Israel was going to defeat them and lift up the Israel. Jesus says, not so fast. Jesus does so by telling a couple of stories that those in the synagogue would have been familiar with. First, Jesus retells the story of the widow of Zarephath and the prophet Elijah in 1 Kings 17. For those who aren't familiar with it, a brief synopsis is that they, there had been a drought famine in that time for three years and six months, not just no rain and poor crops, but the word of God had not come down for that amount of time as well. Elijah is told by God to go to Sidon, the hometown of Jezebel, to see a widow. This unnamed widow had very little water and only a little oil and meal with which to bake bread. Yet she was able to provide food and water for Elijah at his, at his request. As a result, Elijah told the widow that she would have plenty of meal and oil until the, until the rain comes. And that's exactly what happened. The second story is a reference to the healing of Naaman with the prophet Elisha, two different people. Elisha is the successor to Elijah. This shows up in 2 Kings 5. And Naaman, the person that is healed, is a commander in the army in Syria. Naaman suffered from leprosy. 
through the directions of Elisha to go and wash in the Jordan River seven times, Naaman will be made well. So Naaman goes and does exactly as he is told and is made well after a little bit of argument. These stories that Jesus references were well known by those who have been, those who gathered in the synagogue and fit perfectly within the mission of Jesus that he wants to accomplish in his ministry. How do the people who gathered respond? With rage, their theories. They don't like these stories that Jesus is referencing. Why is that? Both the widow of Zarephath in Sidon and Naaman in Syria are not Israelites. They are not Jewish, which makes them outsiders, makes them Gentiles. They are upset because this is their realization that God is not just a God for the Israelites, but a God for the Gentiles as well, and for outsiders, the people whom these people in Nazareth do not love. Their hoped for exclusive relationship with God is not what they get. They get a God who is inclusive, who loves the world. So in response to hearing this news, this interpretation of scripture by Jesus from Isaiah, from 1 Kings and 2 Kings, the people wish to drive Jesus out of town and not just drive him out of town and get rid of him. Did you notice what else they wanted to do? Throw him off a cliff. That's how mad that they were out. We ever get to that point here? You let me know, okay? Thankfully, there aren't any cliffs around here. <laughs> At least none that I'm aware of. And if you tried to lure to me, lure me to one, all right, I'll be on to it. But that's just to illustrate the point of how angry that, it, that these people in Nazareth were with Jesus. Because they're the, the hoped for interpretation that Jesus does not provide, not what they get. Their expectations are not met. Jesus, of course, does not get thrown off the cliff, otherwise we wouldn't have chapters five through the end of Luke. And he slips away unnoticed in the crowd. As we hear these teachings and hear this mission of Jesus once again, how do we, here in the 21st century, respond to the words and teachings of Jesus? How do we respond when we learn that the love, grace, mercy, and new life Jesus comes to proclaim and promise to each of us is not just for certain exclusive members of the group, but is indeed for the entire world? Yes, those with whom we may disagree, those we may not like, those who may even be our enemies, without realizing that perhaps at some level, we may ourselves be someone else's enemy. As Bishop Michael Reinhardt puts it, how will we respond when we discover that God loves Christians, Muslims, and Hindus every bit as anybody else? How will we respond to the good news that God loves those in prison, that God desperately loves the poor, that God loves immigrants, yes, even illegal immigrants. How will we respond upon discovering that God is about reconciliation and healing, not just for ourselves or our own nation, but for all nations? This is often what makes us squirm in our seats, often what makes us uncomfortable and often uneasy and often, yes, perhaps even a desire to throw the messenger off a cliff. The truth is, our God is an inclusive, loving God who loves the whole world. To learn, to help us learn that God does not fit into our preconceived notions and does not fit in the, into the convenient boxes we wish God would, that we can put him on a shelf take them out whenever we'd like. 
We cannot limit love that is limitless. We cannot limit grace, which knows no boundaries. We cannot keep for ourselves the mercy that was never ours to begin with. How do we respond to that love, to this grace and mercy which knows no boundaries? We share it. We give it. We get out of the way if we are an impediment. We do not stand in the way of this grace, love, and mercy being shown to the world. Even if we did attempt to do so, to keep this love, this grace, and mercy for ourselves, God would still find a way for it to be known. Whether we like this message or not. Thanks be to God. Amen. We join together in singing our hymn of the day, hymn number 514.
the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Creator God, teach us to live in humility and honor. Curb arrogance that leads to destruction of natural resources and disregard for future generations. Inspire the work of scientists who urge us to live in harmony with your good creation. Hear us, O oh God. God of the Incarnation, continue to remind us of your presence among us. Be especially with those affected by COVID-19 those who are sick, hospitalized, those grieving the death of loved ones, and all those in the medical profession called to care for those who are sick. Hear us, O oh God. Your grace falls upon young and old alike. Bless the gifts of children in this congregation and in this community. Give us humble hearts to follow their leadership. Inspire us with their laughter, their insights, and their curiosity. Hear us, O oh God. God of healing, help those who are hurting in mind, body, or spirit to know that you are present in the midst of distress. Today we especially lift up Erica, Lyle, Amy, Zach, Byron, Brian, Vicki, Dick, Shannon, Beverly, Mary Lou, Diane, Andy, Dave, Carla, John, and all those we may now allow for the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We praise you, O God, for those who have gone before us and who now see you face to face. Abide with us in this life until we rest in the arms of your never ending love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We invite you to share a sign of peace with one another and share a sign of peace in the comment section. Mm -hmm. Maybe see. As we continue to receive our offerings in any way that they are provided, let us give thanks and offer blessings upon them. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. As we enter into our time of communion, if you are gathered here in person, you, know, you should have received a communion cup as you came uh, into the sanctuary. If you did not receive one, uh, please do raise your hand and our ushers will make sure that uh, one is provided for you. Uh, if you uh, are worshiping with us from home, uh, if you have some bread or wine or grape juice ready, uh, you're invited to uh, have that at the ready uh, as we uh, will be 
partaking in communion here in just a moment. If you only have one of those, remember that having only one of them means that you are still receiving the fullness of communion. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the leading of a star who has shone forth to all nations, in the waters of the Jordan, we proclaim him your beloved son. And in the miracle of water turned to wine, he revealed your glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> blood of Christ shed for you.
Receive a blessing. You have become what you have received. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us in this gift, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As you go on your way, receive the benediction. May God Almighty send you light and truth to keep you all the days of your life. The hand of God protect you. God's Holy Spirit to come to you. May God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit cause grace to be mighty upon and through you. Amen. Let us join together in our sending hymn in number 543, Go My Children with My Blessing. Thank you.